Aloha, my friends, and welcome to another episode with Maui Craft Kitchen. My name is Don, and if this happens to be your first time stumbling upon this channel, please be sure to take a second now and hit that subscribe button. Not only is it 100% free to you, it means the world to me. So please, click subscribe. Okay, now that everybody has had a chance to hit subscribe, I know you can't tell by looking at this video, but the holidays are fast approaching, and I want you guys to be ready. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you the no-need recipe that you absolutely need for bread. Delicious, home-baked bread. So that you can make anything from your own stuffing to bread pudding, leftover sandwiches that we all know and love. Anything that you want, the list goes on and on and on. So please, grab your seat aboard the holiday gravy train and let's work some of that Maui magic and get right down to it. All right, let's give a huge shout out to Rob the camera guy for hooking us up with all the best camera angles. Now in the bowl, I already have 440 grams of bread flour, 25 grams of whole wheat flour, and 10 grams of rye flour. This could by all means be 475 grams of straight bread flour. I just prefer the little bit of added flavor that you get when you mix flours. To this, I'm going to add 356 grams of lukewarm water, three grams of instant yeast, and 11 grams of salt. I'm going to mix them with the back of a wooden spoon until it gets too stiff to mix that way, and then I'm going to switch to my hand and mix until thoroughly mixed for about one minute. Now that we've thoroughly mixed it, we're going to cover it and let it sit on the counter for 30 minutes before we do a series of three, what are referred to as coil folds, spaced 30 minutes apart from each other. Now after a half hour rest, simply turn your dough out onto a lightly floured work surface. The dough will be very sticky at this point. Try to avoid adding too much excess flour. A little bit is fine, just so you don't stick to it. To perform the first coil fold, you're going to lift the dough in the center, letting the front part fall into itself, and then fold that over the bottom. You're then going to rotate it 90 degrees and do the same thing. Lift in the center, letting the front bit fold into itself, and then fold that over the bottom. Now we're going to let this sit on the counter for 30 minutes covered until we do our second coil fold. And after a half hour rest, we're going to perform coil fold number two. To do this, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for coil fold number one. The dough will be a lot less sticky at this point. Again, try to avoid adding too much excess flour. Now we're going to cover it and let it rest for another half hour before performing coil fold number three. All right, and after a half hour rest, we are on to coil fold number three. The dough will be a lot less sticky at this point. To perform coil fold number three, we are going to do the exact same things we did in coil folds one and two. Thank you. 
Now cover and let the dough rest for half an hour before heading on to our final stage of shaping. All right, and now that we're done with our coil folds, we are on to shaping. Simply lightly flour your dough. We've been making a skin on this side the entire time, and we just want to make sure that we keep that skin. Move your dough aside and lightly flour your board. And then invert or flip your dough so that you're looking at the underside. Now we're going to gently stretch our loaf using just our fingertips. We don't want to use our nails. Just stretch it into a rectangle. As nice of a rectangle as you can get. Just be gentle with it. Pull on the edges to get that rectangle shape. And then take this side and fold it just over center, pushing down to seal. And then take this side and fold it just over that side. And pinch to seal it. A little more flour. Rotate 90 degrees. And then we're going to take these two ends here and we're going to bring them together into each other, forming kind of a triangle tip. And then we're going to take the tip of that triangle and fold it over itself. Just like this. Pushing down to seal, just gently. A little more flour if you need to. And then we're going to roll this over and kind of pull it back, creating more tension on the surface. Just pull back. Just roll, roll, and roll, and roll. And then right here at the end, we're going to pull back, pull back. We're going to roll it under and pull back, keeping the tension on the top. Pull, pull. All I'm doing is a motion like this. Pull, pull. Pull, just pull. And that makes the surface a little more taut. Now lightly flour. And we're going to leave this rest for 10 to 20 more minutes covered. And after a 10 to 20 minute rest, we're on to the final stage of shaping. Lightly flour. Get under the dough with your bench scraper and lift it up so that you can lightly flour the board. And then we're going to flip the dough again. And this time, all we're going to focus on is the rolling part. Be gentle. Just tuck this in. Not ripping it, just tucking it. Roll it. Roll it, roll it. At the end here, you may need to flatten the edge out just a little bit so that you can continue to roll it. And then we're going to pull back, give it a little bit of surface tension. Now we're going to take a standard loaf pan 
This is roughly nine and a half inches by five and a half inches by two and a half inches deep. I've lightly oiled this loaf pan and we're simply going to take our loaf and tuck it right in here, seam side down. Now we're going to cover it with a light tea towel and let it rise for roughly one hour at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And after roughly one hour, you should have a loaf that looks similar to this. Now we're going to throw this into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 50 minutes, rotating twice, once after the 20 minute mark and once after the 40 minute mark. And after a 50 minute bake, it should come out of the loaf pan nice and easy. Now sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Look at that beautiful loaf of bread. And that is it, my friends, my recipe for homemade bread. Now go out there and make your French toast, make your sandwiches, but take lots of pictures and be sure to tag Maui Craft Kitchen both on Facebook and Instagram because I want to see what you're making. Also, be sure to head on over to TikTok and check out Maui Craft Kitchen's newest page for short how-to videos and some that are simply just for fun. Now, if you liked any of the products or the equipment in today's video, I'm going to leave links in the description through Amazon where you can purchase just about anything we use today. These links don't cost you anything extra, but Amazon will give me a small commission, which helps support this channel and keep these videos rolling for you guys. Now, I appreciate all of your support. Many mahalos and much aloha.